don't need anything. The only thing we need is to let go. We don't need anything. The only thing we need is to let go. I, um, I believe this so deeply within myself right now. Um, as we are having all of this movement on earth, on this adventure called the human life. The more I live, and I haven't lived that long, only 35 years, the more I know that there's nothing I can add. But the only thing that we need is to let go. Welcome to this Facebook Live. My name is Paola Castro, and today I'm going to talk about letting go. And why am I talking about letting go? Because today is a full moon, so happy Halloween for all of you. Um, and in a full moon, there's always this energy of releasing, of letting go. And let me tell you something. This week, I've been getting the memo. I've been getting the moon's memo of letting go. Uh, at the beginning of this week, I had this excruciating pain on my um, neck and my shoulders. And the pain um, woke me up one night and said to me, and I asked the pain, what are you here for? And it said to me, you need to pay attention to me. <laughs> and the more attention I paid to my pain, the more I knew that I've been carrying things that I don't have to carry, that I can't let go of. And so this is my message to you today. And another reason why I want to give you this message for you today is if you feel like it, if you don't have too many plans for today, you can do your own little ritual of letting go, of releasing of what's no longer serving you. I remember my teacher, Reverend Michael Beckwith, one time saying, there's nothing wrong with you. And I even did a Facebook Live about this. Um, it's in the library if you want to go back and watch it. There's nothing wrong with you. And I remember hearing him saying that and saying, oh my God, he doesn't know. There's a lot of wrong things with me. And he carried on in, in the conversation and started explaining what he meant. And there was one particular idea or um, analogy that he used. And he said, imagine there is a bucket of black paint and you throw that bucket of black paint onto the air. How much of that black paint gets stuck into the air? And the answer obviously is none. There's no black paint that gets stuck into the air. And the reason being is because the air is intangible. There's nothing to stuck to to stick to. <laughs> the paint just falls and also gravity. Now when we see this analogy and we compare it to our lives, we as souls, as spiritual beings, we have all these things that happen in our life, all the traumas from our childhood, all of the responsibilities that we're carrying, all of the things. And we think that's the black paint of life. It's discomfort, pain, illness, divorces, crisis, uh, elections, coronavirus, everything. We think, oh my God, all this black paint is staining me, it's breaking me apart, it's, it's bad. And it is painful and it is difficult. And when we identify ourselves with the quality of inten intangibility as the spiritual beings that we are, we get to understand that none of that pain touches us. None of that pain can do anything onto us because just like the air, there's nothing to stick to. At a soul level, at a spiritual level, nothing has ever touched us. And then there's another component to this conversation which is you're whole and complete. There's nothing to fix. Why? Because everything that has occurred in our life is exactly what it needs to occur for us to be where we are in this moment and for our souls to learn what we need to learn and evolve and expand. Now, there is, there is a, an argument here that I can hear some of you may say, well, Paula, but how did... Okay, I understand what you're saying. There might be nothing wrong with me. I feel there's a lot wrong, but okay. Just, I hear you. Nothing has ever touched my soul. 
but how come I still feel not very good sometimes? And I don't know about you, but I don't know if this week, specifically this week, you felt very strongly your emotions. Uh, and I would love to check with you for those of you that are online. Hi, Vanessa. Hi, Greg. Have you felt, what are the feeling, the feelings and emotions that have transpired for you in this um, week or in the last couple of, of weeks? If you can say hi, if you can say something in the chat, that would be amazing to say hello, Nagananda, hello. Um, and so we think, okay, so how, how, do I, how do I put all of that philosophical knowing into practical things? Because you're talking about letting go, you're talking that there's nothing wrong with me, you're talking that I'm whole and complete, about that I'm whole and complete. How do you do this? So at a spiritual level, we're whole and complete. The thing is that there is so much preventing us from seeing our wholeness, so much preventing us from seeing the perfection of how things unfold. And what is preventing us from seeing all of that? It's all the baggage that we're carrying, all of the responsibilities that there we don't have to carry that we carry, all of the ideas, the perceptions, the beliefs, which, as you know, the most popular belief among all human beings, a limited belief is, I am not enough. I am not worthy. Therefore, I have to compensate. So some of you, let me say it again, some of us <laughs> might uh, compensate with doing too much. And this is what the pain has been telling me this week, because I've been feeling so much pain. I um, have seen this week, and this is my little confession for you, uh, brothers and sisters, that I don't know you, but I know we're all going through the same. Um, there is a belief in my subconscious mind that's been coming up that productivity and worthiness are very correlated. And I didn't know this until pain came up. By the way, pain is such a great medicine. There is a... And I'm, and I'm just doing a parenthesis here. There's a beautiful poem by Khalil Gibran. If you can um, Google it, Khalil Gibran poem about pain. Uh, I didn't, I don't have it here, but it's so powerful. And it says, pain is medicine. It's medicine that breaks you open so that you can see, so that you can receive all that the guru that lives inside of you wants to teach you. So pain, I remember that poem when I was going through my own body ache, body aches at 3 a.m. in the morning. And I said to myself, where did I pick up the idea that my productivity, my doingness was part of my worthiness? And so I've been doing a lot of self-awareness. And I've been thinking, oh my God, what if I let go of this? Who am I if I let go of the idea that I am attached to how much I do and I produce and I, you know, because this pain comes from sitting too long in this chair that you see here behind me, <laughs> trying to stand up a little bit more. But um, I hope you, you're getting the, the feeling tone of this because this is the life of all of us. We're carrying things, we're carrying ideas and beliefs and perceptions, um, wounding from the past so much that is weighing on us. And this year, specifically 2020, there's been this beautiful calling from the universe saying, it's time to let go of what you thought you were or what you think you are. Who are you without all of that? Who are you without the story you tell yourself? I ask myself, who am I without the story that I have to do all these things? Who am I? I'm still I'm still um, sitting with that question um, because the attachment sometimes is so big. But I'm inviting you today to question. Question what is it that you're carrying with you. Question what is it that you're not long that is no longer serving you. And I've been doing this practice. So this happened Tuesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And let me tell you, if you're a teacher, if you like to teach, you come to understand that you teach what you have to learn. So I am teaching and learning myself through this, com and, you know, learning through this conversation with you guys. So thank you so much for being online, for tuning in. Aloha Ramon, full moon maybe and holidays. Yes, 
Hi, Jen. Trauma. Yes, low confidence not being enough. Thank you, Cindy. So many of those stories. Who are you with this, without the story that, that you have um, low confidence and, not, and that you're not enough? For a moment, even if it's for a split second, who are you without that story? And so the answer that comes to me in glimpses is I am the witness of all of the drama of our lives, of my life. I am the witness. I am in the center. I am in the middle. I am none of that. I am eternal. And then, and then the conversation of there's nothing wrong with you starts making sense. Oh, if I'm not none of that. And I get to that moment of stillness that I know, I know especially in these times, it's, it's challenging to find that moment of stillness where there's no story about the others, about myself, about the past or about the future. But when we get there, we understand, oh my goodness, I don't need anything. But what I need is just to let go. And this is how I started this conversation. We don't need anything. What we need is to let go so that we can see the beauty and the brightness that is already within us and the perfection of how everything has unfolded even though has been tainted with pain and sorrow and challenges. I am so excited with me as opening tomorrow. Tomorrow. So for those of you that want to come visit Rhythmia, it's open. And every week I see it, you guys. So uh, last year I was teaching, I've, I've taught there for four years, and I'm going to teach again for the month of November and December. And I'm going to come in now um, with, I'm going to co-teach with my beautiful friend, Kim Terranova. She's magical. But anyway, every time we would do a week of Rhythmia, People will come. You see, when you come, if you come, if you come back, because some of you have been there, we'll receive you um, at the at the entrance at the lobby. We'll sit you in the chair. We'll um, do a little um, intake process, and um, I would see people heavy. And of course, you know, traveling makes you tired, but energetically heavy. Oh, with the, the, the gaze down and some people super scared, like, I don't know why I'm going, like, spirit brought me here, my soul brought me here, I have no idea what I'm doing here because I'm freaking out right now. But And we always receive you with a smile and, may, and you know, making sure that you know that you are safe because it is a very safe space to be. And that we're going to be there for you. And so with so much excitement every week, Saturday and Sunday, so much fun because we know what's about to happen. But then Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday morning, I would teach the answers you. And then you can see from Tuesday to Wednesday, people lining up, faces changing. Thursday, more change. Friday, oh my God, everyone is a bliss. Saturday again, when we're saying goodbye to that same person that looks so heavy in their gaze and in their beingness. So much lightness. And I always would ask, well, what happened? You know, I'm curious. I love stories. I love to hear people's stories. And a lot of people said, look, I still have to go back and meet with the lawyer. I'm still going through that divorce. I still have to go back to that office that I don't really like to be, that I know now that my calling is not that, but I still have to be there for a while while I transition somewhere else. Look, Paola, I still, I still have to deal with my teenage daughter that is going through so much, but I got my miracle. And I always said, but so how did you get your miracle if, if and you know, if we look at the facts, your life kind of still the same back in, in your home. And they say, I let go of so much. And now I can see. And that's my miracle. And of course, you know, people have their unique ways of, of, of explaining what happened. But time and time again, everyone says, I got my miracle. I let go of so much, Paola. I let go of so much. And so that I could see what was already there for me. Because we don't need to let go of anything. We don't, I'm sorry, we don't need anything. <laughs> what we need is to let go. So here's my question to you. 
What do you need to let go of? Whether you come um, to raise me out or not yet, um, as we're going through these strange times, I know it's not as easy to travel just yet. But today there's a full moon, there's an opening in the cosmos. And full moons are an invitation for completion. So what do you need to let go of? What stories, what habits, what crutches do you need to let go of for a moment so that you can see? I invite you to write, write a letter to yourself. What is it that you're letting go? What is it that you're releasing? And let it soak all night on the moon and tomorrow burn it. Let it go. Let it be. And, and use this portal, use this opening to remember that you don't need anything. That all we need is to let go. Beautiful. So uh, let me see your messages. Um, Tina says, thank you for this message. I need to hear this exactly now. You're so welcome. Tina, I need to hear this now too. <laughs> Isn't that interesting how we're all connected? Thank you so much. Jen, thank you for everything that you do. You're welcome, Jen. Adrienne says, I'm letting go of self-doubt. Beautiful. So here is another a part of letting go that I really like to add. Uh, not that we need to add anything, but it's part of the letting go for me. So see if it resonates with you. So if I tell you guys, don't think about a blue car. I don't want you to think about a blue car. Please, Karen, Adrian, Jen, Tina, don't think about a blue car. I'm going to be very disappointed if you guys think about a blue car right now. I want you to think about something else. And you say, well, Paula, you've said blue car so much right now that the only thing I can think it's a blue car, right? So sometimes we're trying to let go by f overly focusing on what's not working out. Oh, my God, I'm feeling this is for me, too, you guys. Okay, so stay tuned. So I'm, I'm feeling it right now. It's coming to me. We try to let go by overly focusing on what is that we need to let go of. And so when we try to let go by overly focusing on what we're trying to let go, the only thing I can think of is, oh my God, I just anxiety, self-doubt, not enoughness. I mean, yes, Paula said that I need to let go of this, but how, how do I let go of this? Now, when you do the medicine, it's a bit more visceral, <laughs> more like the plant helps you to release it literally um either through here or south if you know what i mean but um one of the ways that i have done in the past and it's coming back to me right in this moment is asking myself okay i know i need to let go of this in my case i need to let go of the of the perception that my worthiness is attached to how much i pr produce how much how productive i am in a day how much to do's my love my to-do list <laughs> and you know i want to let that go i want to go back more to the center where there's no story of doingness of, of other people the past or the future the center so when i go to the center in a moment we can do a little breathing to go to the center i ask myself then what is the quality what is the quality that will help me that if I place all of my attention on that one quality it's going to help me release what's no longer serving me what is the quality that I can focus my attention on that I know is going to help me release by the mere act of focusing on this quality is going to help me release this that I know that is no longer serving me so here's the thing Oh, I just uh, looked at Tina, let go of cigarettes. I went, okay, I have a, I have a little example of cigarettes because I used to smoke, so I understand that, Tina. Um, so for example, if I have fear, and I want to let go of fear, I know courage, for me, it's a good quality to focus on. Courage, and yesterday on Our Love, if you don't know what Our Love is, I encourage you to go to that uh, Facebook page. It's uh, our, our app to meet people if you're single. Um, very, very fun place to be. So I was talking about leading from the heart. And when I talk about courage, 
I think of courage coming from the heart. And I'm not just thinking this. I know courage is a quality of the heart. Core means heart in Latin. Courageous means that you're leading from here. So I know the fear is there and I want to let go of that unhealthy fear. So let's focus on courage. What can I do to, to cultivate courage in my life? Perhaps tonight you have a gathering with a couple of people and you're going to feel a little uneasy. So you show up with the chest a little more exposed, center in your being as you show up even though you don't want to do it because it brings a little bit of fear and anxiety. But you go, you go either anyway because you want to let go of fear so you cultivate courage. Someone said here, I want to let go of self-doubt. So you go to the center of your being and you ask, okay, so what quality can I focus on that will, that will help me let go of self-doubt? So, um, Adrienne, what would that be for you? What would help you to let go of self-doubt? For me, and, I'm, and if you're still here, if you want to answer in the chat, for me, Adrian, is when I acknowledge myself. We are under-celebrated and overly criticized by our own egos. So when I'm self-doubting myself, I think that I, I don't know how to do this life. I, oh my God, I don't know. Do I really have what it takes? Oh my God. And so I'm criticizing, judging myself. And instead of that, I want to go to, what do I acknowledge myself for? What do I appreciate about myself? What is good about me? It's not that I am lying to myself. What is already good about me that I can bring in this moment to remind my brain, my monkey brain, oh, no, wait a minute, I am strong. There's good about me. There's a lot of good about me. So bring appreciation, bring uh, acknowledgments. What do I you not acknowledge yourself for? Um, I didn't see your comment, Adrian. So Tina says, I want to let go of cigarettes and bad habits. So Tina, there was a time in my life I was never a heavy smoker, but I remember thinking, I want to let go of this because every time I'm anxious, I'm retreating to cigarettes. Um, and so what could, what could I cultivate? And I cultivated the breath. Now, because I wasn't a heavy cigarette you know, smoker, um, it worked for me. But I've heard from other people that are very heavy on cigarettes and they're very heavy smokers that they say, Paula, it works for me too. I am looking for that extra breath. I'm desperately looking for that. <sighs> and I remember that feeling of putting a cigarette. It's like for a moment I feel calm. So I started doing more breath work. I mean, if you don't know what breath work is, um, Look for transformation of breathwork. That's a, that's a therapy. Look for mindfulness, uh, breathing techniques, meditation, all of that because you're bringing that extra oxygen that your elegant nervous system needs. And I call it an elegant. Someone in a call said it yesterday. You have an elegant nervous system that is doing exactly what it needs to do. So if it's asking you for that extra breath, that's why our brain's like, okay, I'm going to go for that cigarette that gives me that it takes the edge out, even if it's for a moment. So the breath worked for me, but what would help you, Tina Tex, to go into that, to the center for a moment and then ask, what can I cultivate to let go of my bad habits? Yeah. Called depression. Yeah. And Tina, um, Another beautiful way to um, let go of that, and I don't know if you already do it, is to ask for help. So to be courageous enough to ask for help. But if you're in this chat, I know that you have the courage to do it. So ask for help. And, and that is a beautiful quality to cultivate. Humility and availability. Jen, your spirit is beautiful. Thank you for healing. Have a beautiful weekend. Thank you, Jen. Thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. So you don't, we don't need to, we don't need anything. What we need to do is to let go. 
So let's take a moment to take a couple of deep breaths, especially you, Tina, text that I just told you to take a deep breath. And if you can, close your eyes and take a deep breath into your heart. Let go out the heart. Let's do it two more times. Inhale through your heart. Just use your imagination if that doesn't make any sense. Let go out the heart. Inhale through your heart. Let go out the heart. And so in this moment, I want you to, for a second, let go of the stories about yourself. I am this, I am that. I am anxious. I don't believe in myself. I'm depressed. Just retreat from that story. And if there's stories about the other, other person, the government, others, let go of that story for a moment. And imagine that you're going into the middle of your beingness. Take a deep breath in to the center of your heart. Ask yourself the question, what can I appreciate about myself? What can I appreciate about me? If that is too difficult at this moment, what can you appreciate about the earth? Perhaps you appreciate the sun, the ocean. What can you appreciate in this moment? Take a deep breath into your heart. Let go. Now ask yourself, what is the quality that I can cultivate today that will help me to let go of what's no longer serving me? What can I cultivate today? What quality can I bring forth so that I can let go of what I already know is no longer serving me? Mm. Beautiful. We're going to take another deep breath in. Let go. And very slowly and gently, if your eyes were closed, open the eyes and come back. Beautiful people, I've been with you for 28 minutes. Um, I hope you enjoyed this, this Facebook Live. Take advantage of the full moon, let go, let go, and focus your attention on what is the quality that will help you go through these times in your life. Have a great day, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.